Lan vir pu gwyn gil go geg u quyn drog u landus ilio gogo gok. Not that hard. <laughs> Next stop, Holyhead. <laughs> After a night on the tiles, Cardiff style, I'm in need of something in the fry-up department. And I've heard there's no better cure than a traditional Welsh breakfast. So I've come down to one of Pembrokeshire's divine beaches to meet a man I'm told will help me start my day off right. Hiya. Hi, how you doing? How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Do you do breakfast? Yeah, of course, I do a lovely Welsh breakfast. Cockles, bacon, lava bread. This is the lava bread, which is uh, we pick the seaweed off the beach. How come seaweed? Lava seaweed's been in Wales for thousands of years. And um, it's the same seaweed they use in Japan to make sushi uh, nori. It's just in Wales, we just obliterate it in a pan for about 10 hours of water and make it in a little pu um, puree. And um, it doesn't look fantastic, but it just tastes amazing. Wales, the spiritual home of lava seaweed. We've got an old seaweed hut down here. We collect stuff off the beach, bring it here, cook away. Magic. Shall I show you where the seaweed comes from? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Pull through the water. Do you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> Just like Moses, lava bread, what's going on? Is it gourmet food? No. It's poor man's food, and like most poor man's food, it gets fashionable. But a lot of people my age have never tasted lava bread, a lot of people have never tasted cockles. But it's nice to celebrate. Um, you know, traditional dishes like that. And that's Absolutely. what we're trying to do at the uh, shack. Oh, here's, here's a little bit. Oh, oh, weird. Wait, I would have just thought that was a melted bin bag. Yeah. Well, doesn't look very that. appetizing, does yeah, it? No, it doesn't. You hold it up to the light, you can yeah. see it's quite thin. It's like a condom. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lava seaweed can be up to about 20-30% protein in the summer. And they're finding all sorts of amazing things about it. So I think it's just going to get more and more popular. It's quite good love here, actually. Should have brought a bag down, Charlotte. Yeah, I do. know. We could be making money right now. You could now. have put me to work. I know. Today, this beach seems more popular for surfing than seaweed. But Jonathan says that up until the 50s, there was a thriving industry here made up of female seaweed foragers who collected lava to be shipped off around the rest of Wales. So this is the seaweed hat. It's still in use? No. <laughs> they built 20 of these hats. Each family owned one. And then the women uh, worked the uh, beaches every morning. It's probably about a five, six mile walk. And the whole day picking seaweed. But the lava seaweed in there, they leave it there for a week to dry slowly. And in about the 70s and 80s, uh, they all got blown down and I should have saved this one. So what happens in here now? Teenagers we canoodling. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got many happy memories in here. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the view, take a seat, and uh, I'll what bring my <laughs> The sea air has gone some way to taking the edge off my hangover, but I'm not out of the woods yet. Look at that table service. I know. 100% Welsh true bread bus. Guys. Well, dig in. So, this is lava bread, which is seaweed and porridge oats. It's so weird because this is the sort of flavours you associate with, like, the Far East. It's really good in this context. This is really rather exotic. It makes the English breakfast look completely moronic. <laughs> Wales, you're full of surprises. Belly full. I'm ready for a hair of the dog. So we're diverting to a watering hole all the guidebooks are raving about. We're stopping off at a place which has been voted higher on the list of places to visit in Wales than St David's Cathedral. But it's a pub called The Different Arms, and it's run out of an elderly woman's front room. This is your pub? Yes, I've been here 68 years. You've been living in this house 68 years? Yes. Was this always a pub? Yes. Um, since 1845. When will you stop? When I play out. <laughs> <laughs> Can I possibly have a drink? You, you press the bell. The different arms is definitely a different time. <laughs> Hiya. Hello there. Beers, guys. Mmm. 
It's a good pint. And this is a place where you come and it's almost like time stands still. Is there anything you want to ask me? <laughs> no. no. I just wondered. Back on the open road, I'm in search of a rare fishy treat. The unicorn of the Welsh rivers, known as Suin. In Carmarthen, a select group of men have been pulling these elusive fish out of the River Towie for generations. First used by the ancient Britons 2,000 years ago, these coracles made of wicker covered with pitched cowhide are still used today by fishermen in the remote parts of Wales. Controlling the movements of the boat with a paddle in one hand, they cast their nets with the other. Not just anyone can catch suin. Apparently there's only about 20 pairs of fishermen who are allowed to fish for these things. But luckily, it's the beginning of the season and I've been allowed to infiltrate a fishing session. Hello, chaps. Keith. Keith. Malcolm. Malcolm. Joe. Joe, nice so good you. to meet you. You're all family, am I mistaken? Yeah, we're all related. We all come from a long line of fishermen. Suin are a migratory fish, born in the tributaries further upriver. They go to sea, adapt to salt water, they feed, they get bigger, they get stronger, and then they come back in and they're like um, fish on steroids because they're so muscular and that's why they taste so good, you know? The guy's ancestors were full-on coracle fishermen. But all three of these guys have other full-time jobs. Catching suin is something they do in their spare time. This is not easy. We catch them in ones. We don't catch them in tens. You know, it's one at a time and you could be here all night and have nothing. From what I've read, girls aren't really into it. The way we carry the coracles, you've got a strap across the... Your boobs? Your boobs, yeah. I don't think that'll be a problem for Oh, there me. we are, OK. There's a silver lining to every, every crowd, travel, ladies. Yeah. I'm never getting out of this. <laughs> You look like a ninja turtle. <laughs> there you go. Did I do it? Yeah, you're in. You'll only fall out sideways. sideways. Or not. You got it. I have it! I have it! Which way am I supposed to be going? But you're only allowed to use one arm. I'll get one very big arm. This all sounds delightful, but there's a catch. We have to wait a few hours before actually trying to catch anything because coracle fishing only happens in the middle of the night. The simple fact is, is that the fish will see the net, go into a deep pool and they won't move because they're, they're that switched on. It could be three o'clock in the morning and you've got to be in work by 7.30 and you hit a good fish. And then you have the decision, do we go again or do you go to bed? Wow. And, and it's not for the money, it's not for, for anything other than the buzz, you know. That's and um, mad. It is mad. Well, I just need a can of Red Bull, I suppose. <laughs> we deem it dark enough when you can see seven stars in the sky. And it's called Clevochur. Joe, do you know any other people your age doing coracle fishing? No, just me. So you're the youngest coracle fisher in the land? Yeah, <laughs> and the handsomest. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to try soon and there's so few in the country, so I don't know if I'll get a chance if they don't catch one. Because of my inexperience and the fast currents, I have to watch from the sidelines. Good luck, guys. So this is just a typical weekday night in Carmarthen, Wales. I'm on a wild goose chase trying to follow three Welshmen down a river in the pitch dark. Go at it, right? Well before the bridge, you're right. Today, they took me out practicing. It was all fun and games, and I just thought, oh, no wonder they love doing this. And then as soon as we come out here, it's freezing cold, it's pitch dark. I'm worried it's very sharp water. This is the only place I get nervous of the part of the system underneath me. How was it? No luck. One of those things, isn't it? You, you, got, you got it like a fish. Got it like a fish. Spew in like a sewer. <laughs> oh well. 
Malcolm does a really good job. He's a broker. He's not doing this for money. There must be something about it that, like, compels them to do it. On the weekends, the boys and I, some of them are like, oh, come on, come out, then. I guess they go out on Fridays and things, but I choose this all the time. When a fish hits the net, I can't really describe the feeling. You feel it, but you hear it at the same time. It's a bizarre sensation. Everything bursts into life. The irony here is that actually catching the fish seems like it's just a bonus. For these guys, it's more about the experience, the tradition, the camaraderie, and what looks to us like inconvenience to them is irresistible fun. But I still want to try the damn fish. So the guys are taking me to Wright's Food Emporium to join them and their friends for one of their legendary communal dinner parties. Because, as luck should have it, they have one of the only remaining suin left from last season stashed in their freezer. Antawi suin. So this is the tag that uh, we have to hold on to, so Natural Resources Wales, uh, when they come by, they can check that all of the suing that has been caught responsibly. Right. We know when it was caught, who caught it, and whereabouts. So yeah, we're really lucky to be able to get such great fish and I such know. local fish. You can kind of store it gently. Perfect. It's tremendous. Is there like a particularly Welsh way of doing it, or is it open to interpretation? Uh, well, my friend Joe likes to cook it in a microwave. We're going to poach it with some white wine, some parsley, uh, some dill, and some lemon. Yum! So, what else is on the menu tonight? So, we've got some lobsters from Cardigan Bay. Winter prawns. Yeah, they're, I think they're all alive, hopefully, so... Yep, that's good. Take that off and eat it like that. No, it's not right. Please, don't, 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 don't. We've also got some razor clams, some whelks. All Welsh. All Welsh. Look at this thing. Oh, Looks revolting. I'm never coming here again. Well, Gulea the Hanner, Buid Gogonedis, a Cavishion Guich. Heroes, Val, heroes. It turns out Suin is really good. Almost worth floating downstream, freezing your nuts off in the small hours for. But it's not about the fish anymore. This banquet is so epic and the vibe so welcoming, I've almost forgotten I'm not at home. And yet I feel this couldn't happen anywhere else. It's kind of like Christmas dinner with a bunch of strangers who talk funny. Good morning! Hi. How much of a part of your life is foraging? Huge part of my life. O M G. Thanks for ruining every meal I'll ever eat again. <laughs>